corn. Plant some corn so the raccoons can tear it up. Deer. This is a Harbor Freight machete. It's like five bucks. Advertises stainless steel. So I figure five bucks, why not? Walmart sells five dollar machetes. And they're pretty decent. The problem with this one, it's too flexible. Really flimsy. It's too light. It's good for a small brush. And the saw part doesn't work that great. I don't know if it's because of the design of the blade, they're all, all straight teeth. But when you saw into something, it's like the path the teeth cut is not that wide. So when the blade starts going into the cut, it's very, very tight. I, I wasn't successful in sawing a tree branch with it. It's like a two inch tree branch. I got. I just got aggravated with it. You know, I wanted to just bend in the branch and breaking it the rest away by hand. I didn't even make it halfway through. And that was about three minutes of work. So if you just need it to chop some light brush, it's pretty good for that. But if you're looking at it for a, a saw machete combo, it's like it'll take the place of two tools. No, it won't. Something good just to keep in the back seat of the truck. For five bucks but I can't see you making trails with it just light work but, uh, big tree that fell it's gonna, it's not too safe I gotta wait till all this dries up to where I can get back here the chainsaw and Either the mower or the winch. Some more deer tracks. Raccoons. It's not very safe. The tree broke October of uh, 2020, but it didn't fall over until about two weeks ago. But two weeks ago, this is two foot of water right here. You hear a pump running in the background, the neighbor's actually pumping his, his property out. What's stopping this tree from falling is one little thin oak tree, about four inches diameter. About right there, it's wedged in it. I have to figure out a way to safely get this thing down. It's split from about right here all the way down. Finally laid over. It's gonna get me one day and fall on me, I guess. Fresh deer tracks. I installed a camera there two days ago. So I better check that footage and see if there's deer there. Yeah, because there's actually deer tracks here. It may be bedding down somewhere up here. Size comparison. Young deer, yearlings, maybe. Yeah, 
the current of the trail's too wet for me to put my side by side in here. If I bring it back here, then it's definitely never gonna heal up. All the raccoons was at a party back here. I got lots of coons, possums, otters. Uh, I've seen bobcat tracks. I haven't actually seen a bobcat. Uh, coyotes come through every now and then. I've got them on my game camera. I got bees. Somewhere over here is a tree. Passed it up already. There's a huge hive. And there's a hollow cypress tree. I believe it's uh, that tree right there. It's hollow for a long ways up and there's a big beehive in there. Supposed to be a bee, a bee box somewhere around here, but I don't really see it. I haven't seen it in a couple days. I don't know where it went. Cypress knees, almost knee high. Lots of cypress knees. See that bee box? Oh, cyber's knee. Ah, oh, I see it. Not a single bee in there. That is the hollow cypress. Other side, it's got a like a cavern in it. It's pretty neat. Bunch of hollowed out cypress knees. Cypress doesn't rot, but I'm what I'm assuming happening is bugs. Bugs get in there and eat the tree. Cypress doesn't rot. This tree, it's hollow and it's, it goes way up there. There's bees up there. Let's see if I can zoom in. It's a hive inside the tree. Right now we're in spring. We have a bunch of what I call face spiders because they build their webs by face height. Little tiny, tiny spiders. You can't see their web until it's in your face. Those come first in the spring. Look right here. I don't know if you can see them. I call that a face spider. They usually face high. That's why every time I come, I bring a machete. Usually, usually around June, I have to constantly walk doing this. Constant. Uh, when we get three three days of constant rain, heavy pour down, what I just walked through will be about a one to two foot of water, and the water stops right here. There's like a levee right here, a rise in the property. The levee goes on down for a good ways. The water stops right here. 
It's a future campsite. I got wild onions everywhere. Nice, pretty little redwood cedars. I'm gonna transplant them, move them somewhere else. Got a bunch of these growing wild back here. My wild onions are blooming. The whole stalk grass is edible. And if you dig it up, there's about a nickel size onion down there. It's really good for cooking. It's good raw, but really adds flavor to food. This is usually where I'd be quiet. Once I pass this point, you usually walk up on deer in the middle of the day. Well, they probably smell me coming. I done sprayed some uh, bug repellent before I left the house because I was anticipating mosquitoes. Usually when it's close to 70 degrees, mosquitoes are bad out here. Today they're not bad at all, but it was just in the mid 50s overnight. A hoof slide for your tracks. A little young and double track right there. I left a few carrots right here. Nothing took it. See those fresh deer tracks? Pass right by it. They wasn't here two days ago when I put the carrots. Got a trail camera up there. I read on Google that deer love deer love carrots. It's not the case for my deer. I did leave them pecans. They ate all the pecans. In one night. More deer tracks. Just beautiful and peaceful back here. Fresh.
popular area during hunting season for the deer, not for people. Not that many people come back here. But during hunting season, this right here is a big, big rub. Mark got sent on this vine right here. I had my camera mounted there and I was feeding here. Man, the most deer I've seen at one time. And night after night after night, my cell camera was sending me about 400 pictures a night. And I had it set five minutes apart. They would just stay all night and camp out here. But I moved on over about 30 feet that way. Right now, this is an active deer path. They pass through here, come to the food. They're in a the habit of eating here now. But I haven't been feeding lately, other than a pile of carrots two days ago. Last year, I fed uh, two pounds of corn daily for a whole year. But not back here. I only fed back here during hunting season, which starts in uh, October 3rd. The rest of the year was at the front where uh, you saw my feeder. Nothing touched my carrots. Possums, raccoons, rabbits, nothing. They just walk right on by it. The deer, most of the time, the deer enter through here. It's a little trail. It's a little deer trail. It goes on through. The deer will come out and look at the ground and the next picture will be looking at the camera. The next picture looking at the ground, they pacing. They want food. I understand. So I'm about to end this video. Got corn on my back to plant and corn to spread. That way they can have a good meal. They're in the habit of coming here daily whether I have food or not now. Train them. Got to train them, train them year round. Make it the habit for them to come here daily. And when it comes time to hunting season, if you're into deer hunting, that's how you get them. You sit here, wait patiently. The creature's a habit. They're very cautious and scared of noise and smells. But you put them in a place where they frequent daily, they're going to overlook you. Hope you enjoyed a little walk through the woods. I'm going to go ahead and plant this corn, lay the corn out, get on out of here.